the slap it. Spiritual war, we no in on no chat it. We deep in the streets and my team never lack it. Me 1611, the key pass me strapping from the time you pull that. Then please up the slap it. You know what confess, we lost your transgress. So you're dipping at the water with nasty conscience. Past commandments, make me blast it upon them. Stay far from me with your blasted nonsense. Christ said to forgive, but them wrath he condemned. In a sin, them I live and them heart is content. We love the budget, the article friends. Even if it fall out, the last is random. We keep calling laws anywhere we dead. Anywhere we dead. Well, try to tell me where you say. Where you say? I'm a part time, do it every day. Do it every day. We don't care when nobody say. We keep calling laws anywhere we dead. Anywhere we dead. Well, try to tell me where you say. Where you say? Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord, not because of our righteousness, but because of your son that given us a chance to return back to thee. Please, Father, have compassion upon us. Please, Father, have mercy upon us. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Father in heaven, honor be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us for our sin, forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from all evil. Father, we also pray for Bishop Netanyahu, you heal them quickly and speedily. We also pray for those that are sick in the body, you, you heal them quickly and speedily. We also pray for those that lack of faith, strengthen their faith by these class that's coming out, or by the trials they're going to go through. In the name of your son jesus to christ let the whole congregation say hallelujah. hallelujah 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 father we also thank you lord for continue sending your angels to work among us we also thank you for the for the food also for the drink we also thank you for brothers and sisters that be in faith when uh send new labor send these brothers that able to understand then they're able to know what this work is all about. We ask for labor. This, the, the vineyard is big, Lord. Please send in good brothers, good spirit to help us to build this nation. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we thank thee, we glorify thee. Amen. Men of Israel. Men of Israel. Sons of God. Patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Most high Christ bless. Salute down, face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Zara, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Hey, shalom, 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 Israel. Shalom. They've been a, they've been a while now. All right, happy Sabbath to brothers and sisters online as well. Gonna have a little Thai class, and I'm hoping you're paying attention. All right, and we're gonna start with my favorite scripture, uh, Romans 7, verse 25. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. I'm thinking all you have a mind here. You understand? So the Bible is telling us that we have to thank the Father for Jesus Christ. Why we have to thank the Father for Jesus Christ? Let's read verse 15. This is why you have to thank the Father for Jesus Christ. Verse Go ahead. Verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. Mm -hmm. For what I would do, that do I not. Mm -hmm. But what I hate, that I do. Because that's what we used to do in the world. I mean, we all have the instant what was good, what was evil. But for some reason, we find ourselves doing more evil than what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's why we have to thank God through Jesus Christ. Now, we're no longer in that mindset to do the evil. You know what I mean? Like reject the good. You understand? But now, thank God through Jesus Christ, now we're able to acknowledge the things we used to do in the world was evil. Now, through Jesus Christ, we're able to, uh, through Jesus Christ, now we're able to see clearly what's going on now. Because Jesus Christ is the law. It's that law that when that, that gonna bring that light. You understand? It's that law that gonna bring that light. 
Hey, let's get that in uh, uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Paul make a statement in verse 7. Pay attention. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. You see that? Paul said he did not know sin, but by the law. The only way you're able to know sin, you got to know God's laws. You know what I mean? In the world, we didn't know. We didn't, we, we, nobody teach us nothing about the laws. So how the hell are you going to operate within God's laws? You understand? But thank God to Jesus Christ now. You're wide awake. To Jesus Christ, we're able to see what's wrong. We're able to see the thing we was doing that was wrong all this time. All these religion we was practicing, worshiping the Sunday church, that's all was wrong. How are we able to see it? To Jesus Christ is, is the law. Jesus Christ is that light that's come in darkness. Let's get that in John 3 and verse 20 right quick. Jesus Christ it, that is that light. They're able to see. You're able to see now what stage you're in. You're able to see the level you're in. You're able to see these things you used to do. Go ahead. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You see that? Everyone that do evil going to hate Christ. Because he is that light. He is that light to show in us our evil. But if we live in an evil life, we don't want to change. Guess what? We're going to hate Christ. But if we live in an evil life, we know Christ is the light. We, we want to change. We're going to join to Christ. Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You see that? He, uh, uh, he's not going to come to the light. He don't want his deed to be reproved. What was his deed? Sin. He don't want to be reproved. We all want to be reproved, brother. Every prophet that we turn back, we all want to be reproved. So we can prepare our soul for salvation and prepare you for salvation. We want to be reproved. That's what the Bible is all about. To reprove the soul of men. We want to be reproved. But the brother, the sister, you know what I mean, that love the evil, he don't want that. He don't want to change. So I'm good being the pimp. I'm good being the hoe. I'm good being the, uh, being the devil I am. But if you love the Lord, what he's represent, you want to learn about him. You want to know the things that he does. Go ahead. Let's read that verse one more time. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You see that? If you in the spirit of evil, you're going to hit the light. Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light. You, you're not going to come to the light. Go ahead. Lest his deeds should be reproved. You see that? Unless your deeds should be reproved. But a lot, of, a lot of brothers don't want their deed to be reproved. They don't want to be checked by the Lord. They don't want to be checked by the Lord. Go ahead. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. You see that? If you do that commandment, you're going you're gonna to see Christ. You're going to say, you know what? This is the light I've been waiting for. Christ is the law. Christ is the commandment that brings life to the world. You understand? Read that verse again. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. And see, he that doeth truth gonna come to the light. That's how you get brighter. What is the truth? He that come to the truth. Let's see what is the truth. What is the truth? He that come to the truth, he gonna acknowledge that light. Because he's gonna get brighter every day. In Christ, he's gonna get brighter. Go ahead. Psalms 119 verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. You see that? Thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. Thy law, you have to keep the law. You understand? That's how you're able to see Christ. He is the light. That's going to make us wider. That's why we have to accept that we prove. A lot of us don't want to change. That's why you have brothers and sisters. Anytime Bishop will have class, either they will say there's bashes of women, or why you don't talk about the men? Why? Because because they refuse to be reproved. You understand? You have to understand why we we harsh upon our sisters. Then uh, do you have the little book they call Willie Lynch? Oh, do we have it here in the in the thing? Yeah, anybody here have it? Let's see if you don't have the Willie. Lynch. Yeah, the little yellow in the bottom. Yeah. Then people, uh, people don't understand that. That's it. 
Yeah, I think is this page 30 that I want or 25? When it said, uh, when it's talking about the black woman. I think it's 25 or 30. Because we have to understand the condition of our sisters. I mean, they've been programmed to go against the black men. You know what I'm saying? You've been programmed. So our job as the elect, <laughs> I mean, we're going to break the program. Our job is to destroy the program. You understand? But it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem like, it's going to seem hard. It's going to seem like, it's, uh, why they talk like that? You see that? Go ahead. The Willie Lynch letter. Both nigga females being without the influence of the nigga image. Now, read it again. Both nigga females being without the influence of the nigga image. She, she supposed to have influence of the black man. Because <laughs> she come from the black man. Go ahead. Frozen with an independent psychology. You see that? Frozen with an independent. Put her in a state of independent where she don't need you no more. But you come from that man. You need that man. <laughs> you understand? They say, folks, that thing. Kill that thing and her. Not to depend on the black man. Let her think upon herself. She do all that. I heard sisters on Clubhouse, boy, if you listen to that conversation, one sister's come and, and, and she's saying that a, a black man have to show that he can have a good job for her to submit under the black man. He have to have a good job. That's what she said. Then she really believed that thing. <laughs> her spirit was broke. But I wonder the family she grew under, did the father have money? <laughs> I guarantee you the father did not have money. <laughs> I guarantee you that. <laughs> you understand? But that, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, I know. Probably don't even have the father inside the home. You understand? That's that mindset our sisters have. Well, go ahead. Will raise their offspring into reverse position. You see that? To reverse what it's supposed to be. Reverse what it's supposed to be. So that's why when you see Bishop have class, you see Captain Deacon have class. Because we got that M for that spirit. That when brainwash our woman. I mean, we're not saying that you just evil, but guess what? Satan can easy jump on you to do something stupid. So we're trying to protect you from yourself by teaching you what? By showing you example on TV, by showing you example in the Bible. What you supposed to be like. What you supposed to be not like <laughs> is what you see on TV. You're not supposed to be like that. What you see in the world, you're not supposed to be like that. When you speak as a, uh, uh, as a repentant sister, give me Proverbs 31 verse 26. This is when you speak as a repentant sister, that's what's going to come out your mouth. That's what we want for all your sisters to understand. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Proverbs 31 verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. What man does it want that? Now, every man want their wife to have wisdom. Every man want the, the wife to speak with a tongue of kindness. You know what I mean? Not hostile all the time. You understand? Every man want that. That's a peaceful house. When, you're, when your wife have wisdom, when she open them up with wisdom, like for example, I give you a sister who don't have no wisdom. You understand? A sister said, the, the husband said, I'm going to use my bank account. The sister said, I had a bank account before D. That was a long time. You know I mean, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to keep my bank account. That's what she said. But the husband said, no, no, we just want to use one bank account. She said, no, my bank is much better. <laughs> That's a woman with no wisdom. That's a woman with no wisdom. But in her mind, she's thinking she's right. Because who's inside the house supposed to be ruled the house? That man. But she worried about the two cents difference. But she would trouble her house. She would trouble her house for two cents different. That's a simple woman. You understand? That's a simple woman. Because that scripture say, obey your husband for everything. You understand? It's just a bank account, sis. That's all it is. <laughs> it's just a bank account. They go another sister. They go another sister. Uh, uh, her kids may have a fish rod. Then, uh, uh, then she's going to go to the husband. I think I should buy him a new one. The husband said, no, let him use the old one so he can get better at it before you buy a new one. She said, I'm going to buy one anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a simple sister. 
You see, anytime you're trying to put your two cents in, you sound stupid. <laughs> Just apply what the Bible said. Submit under the man. Anytime you're trying to put your two cents in, you're going to sound stupid. That's a stupid, that's, that's the most foolish thing I heard. Because you're going to bring trouble to your house with that type of spirit. That's the spirit of Willie Lynch. Now let's read it again, bro. Willie Lynch, so she may understand. Both nigger females being without the influence of the nigger image. You see that? Without being the influence of the nigger man, the, the brother. Her influence is supposed to be to that man. You, you read that in Genesis. Let's read that in Genesis. She's supposed to be influenced by the black man, not the white man. The black man. That's where she came from. The black man. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the women, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow mm -hmm. and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Y'all see it, brother? Her, her whole beings of creation. She's supposed to look up to her husband. Her whole desire. She don't have her own desire. Her own desire is to her husband. You understand? But guess what? The American way says, sis, you don't have to submit to him if you don't have no money. <laughs> but there you go. She didn't even have a father, though. <laughs> you understand? The father was never home. Or the father was a, the father was a struggle to pay the rent, uh, to pay the rent. To, you know what I mean? To make sure she go to different, uh, to make sure she have her education. But she don't look at you like the father. She look at you as a nigga. You understand? You understand? Because she already idolized the white man as the money maker. <laughs> she idolized him. Look at him. He got everything. If you're not like him, no. No way I can marry you. That's the mindset we're trying to book. This is the thing we're trying to destroy in the black woman. That mindset is the mindset of the damn devil. You understand? Now let's go back. Let's go back. Now we read about her desire. She's supposed to be her husband, right? You know what I mean? Now let's let, let, read, read that Willie Lynch one more time. Read that the, uh, demonic man one more time. Both nigger females being without the influence of the nigger image. You see that? She's not supposed to have the influence the fluent of the black man. Where she come from? <laughs> she have to have influence by the white man. She, be, she have to be influenced by us. Not the black man. She have to be influenced by us. The enemy. Go ahead. Frozen with an independent psychology mm. will, will raise their offspring into reverse positions. You see that? To fear the black, uh, to fear the white man. I mean, the black man, the woman's job is to make you to fear the white man. Mm. When you see him, make sure you see sir. You notice that, even though these smile in there, you notice that when you talk to white folks, it's always sir. When you talk to black people, it, it, I mean, you never say that. Yeah, yeah, you just say, all right, oh, okay. You notice that because you've been conditioned to it. You've been conditioned to it. Or you see the white folks, you want to open the door. When you see a black brother, you just walk through. You've been conditioned to that. <laughs> you understand? You've been conditioned to act to act like super, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, 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 like a superman when you see the, the white man. When you see the black man, he's it, it, just a nick. He just, I mean, you've been, you been, you been scooped. When you see him, you better bow down. You better put your head down. <laughs> That's the job of the black woman to put in you, black men. You understand? To, to raise you up like this. When you see your brother, you can kill your brother. But when you see the white man, salute. <laughs> Go ahead. The one with the female offspring will teach her to be like herself, <laughs> independent and negotiable. You see that? She's not going to like her husband. She's going to like herself. It's all about self-love. You notice know in the world, I love myself. You see, I love myself. You notice that that's the slogan in the world. The black woman is, I love myself. I don't have to be with you. I make my own money. <laughs> you heard that. It's not the first time. You, you heard that. Because what's going on, brother? What's going on, sister? What's going on is the fact of the matter we have to understand. There is a cycle we brought up to destroy the image of the white man must be destroyed out of the black woman mind because she's supposed to have our image in her mind because she come from us. She come from us. Go ahead. We negotiate with her through her by her and negotiate her at will. <laughs> you see that thing? Yeah, everything. <laughs> 
He, you see, give her everything she asked for. I mean, she want the better. She want the the master page. You give it to her. I mean, we, she don't even have to pay for it. Give it to her because we're gonna need her at the end to be the product. We're gonna use her at the end. I mean, to win us the money because she wanna be like us so bad. She gonna buy the wig. <laughs> she wanna be like us so bad. She gonna. Uh, that's why it's one point three trillion spending in wig and what. And then, uh, what is that? Uh, beauty supply. <laughs> she going to bring that money back to us. Don't worry about it. Just give her. Give her whatever she want. She going to bring the money back to us. She going to be the machine we use in the black community to bring the money back. We going to slave them. Then she going to bring the money back to us. That's not what they do, brother. <laughs> yeah, look at your bank account. <laughs> yeah, look at the Chinese. How many times she sliced the cards. <laughs> That's all you have to do. If you don't, if you don't believe me, just look at your rackets. <laughs> That's all. You might don't believe what I'm saying. Go ahead. The one with the nigga male offspring. She being frozen with a subconscious fear for his life. You see that? Go ahead. Will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak. You see that? Raise them what to be what? Mentally dependent. Ment he have to depend on somebody. The black man have to depend on somebody. He cannot depend on God no more. Mm. You got to depend of the enemy. The enemy become God now. You, you understand? You depend. You ever, I don't know if you're, you know I mean, like some of you who's business minded, you never had the thought that said, damn, I got to put a white man in my business to make the business work. <laughs> you never had the mindset because that nigga ain't going to spend. Because I'm familiar with that. Because I had, I had a sneaker store, me and two other brothers. Then the brothers that we used to, we used to, they used to spend with us, Buying all type of drugs. Guess what? They will never come in the sneaker store buying anything. <laughs> you understand? But to show you their mindset. I, I'm, I'm familiar with the mindset. Because the same people that will buy heavy things. Yes, those are the brothers you depend on to make sure the store works. They never show up. You understand? I'm familiar with that type of nigga mind. <laughs> Trust me. Go ahead. Will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak. You but see that? To be independent and weak. That's why when you see them playing sport, I mean, that they're, 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 they're like strong black men. But when you listen to them, you listen to their conversation, is weak. They are weak men. <laughs> Very weak men. You understand? Go ahead. But physically strong. You see that? They physically look strong. Big black men. Now there you go. He go at home, his wife. <coughs> Nigga. But when he see his brother, though, pow, pow. <laughs> but when he see the black woman become his God. That's why Eve was trying to do in the garden. To be the God of Adam. God said, hell no. I did not make my garden for a woman to rule over it. I make it for my garden for a man to rule. But God looked at the garden and said, something wrong with the garden. You understand? He said, something wrong in the earth. Something is wrong in the earth. I have to come down, Adam. What the hell going on here, bro? I'll give you control over something. What the hell? You, you notice that Adam had control over everything in the garden, include the black woman. Then what he had control over, come to take control over him. <laughs> Think about it, brothers. Adam start worship the woman. <laughs> you understand? Then God said something wrong in their garden. Something is wrong inside this garden. The element ain't working. You understand? Something is unbalanced here. Because that's not how God made it for the woman to rule over men. God did not make it like that. It's for men to rule over a woman. That's how God made it. Something was wrong inside the garden. We was invaded, brother. The greatest kingdom we ever possessed. We was invaded by a black woman. You damn right we ain't going to be easy on the black woman. <laughs> you understand? Because we know her potential when Satan entered to her. <laughs> we know that. You understand? So we're going to be mindful. But we love our sisters, though. Go ahead. In other words, let's drop that. Let's go back. That's why you have to understand why, why we get rough sometimes. No, no, let's go back. Let's go back all the way up to a uh, woman. All right? So uh, let's go back to woman 7 and 25. One more time. Yes, sir. Romans 7 verse 25. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Mm -hmm. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. You know why with the mind you must serve the laws of God? Because in the mind, that's where they put their programs. 
That's why they program the black woman to, to be independent. You don't have to, you, uh, the black man don't have to be the image you look up to anymore. You can look it up to us. We white folks. We're going to lead you the right way. We're giving you free college, free education. You understand? It's in the mind. So we have to go deep within that mind. We move these things. White folks put on, <laughs> because he put it on to Stevie. You know I mean, MTV, BET, Atlanta Housewife, all these programs, you must get it out of the black woman head. She look at her beauty and she went, she went to put a fake hair on. That's her beauty. <laughs> that thing is not yours. Stick that damn mop out your head. But she start to believe that thing. <laughs> because she want to look, she want to look just like the oppressor. Because something wrong with her mind. <laughs> something wrong with her mind. She feel uncomfortable. If she don't look like the oppressor, she feel uncomfortable. She can never be her. Our job is to break this cycle. You understand? Our job is to remove this demonic spirit in our black woman. You know what I mean? Who controlling them? As a black sister, I said, I talked to her sister, said, yeah, yeah, man, but when we do buy the wig, that's our money, though. <laughs> like, wow. Like, I could not believe my ears. <laughs> I heard it, but my ears, I could not believe what I heard. I like, what you just said, sis? You say, oh, that's our money. We can buy anything we want. I like, sis, it's not the case. The case is you put too much money and uh, you put, you win too much money to the enemy pocket. You put too much money in the enemy pocket by robbing us. <laughs> you robbing us. You rob your husband to go put the money in the Chinese pocket. You rob your own children education to send the enemy children in best school. <laughs> Something wrong with you, sis. <laughs> but she, she's not going to confess it. She's not going to confess it. You see, when, when God showed to Eve, he said, Eve, what happened, Eve? Oh, the, 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 the serpent, the, the serpent, the serpent, the serpent, the, uh, the serpent. No, no, the serpent did not do nothing, Eve. The serpent tell you straight up, you give the serpent the law. The serpent said, you don't have to do that, Eve. You know, but you will blame it in the serpent, though. <laughs> I mean, oh, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent did this to me. That, no, no, no. You always want to learn that. You always want to do the evil, Eve. <laughs> the serpent did not do nothing to you. You always have the evil. You always envy your husband. I experienced that in my marriage. Then a lot of brothers that travel experience that in their marriage. When you travel, when you start teaching the gospel, your own wife going to say, you all went to vacation. Your own wife, who's supposed to say, you do a good work. You come back, you will think that love that, that she said, oh, you all just went to vacation. You all went vacation. That was a vacation. All she can see in their video is when we have the uh, off time. So we try not, we try not get ready for the next day. So we went in the pool and have a good time. That's the only little part she sees. She don't see your life being put on the line. She don't see none of that because she evil. <laughs> I'm telling y'all straight. She got an evil spirit. She dealing with, you know what I mean? She have to conquer it because there's so many class come out. Says you can never war like that no more. Where your husband is in the battlefield, you call him, talk to him about bills. You understand? Or, or how that bill gonna pay? How this and hey sis, yeah, some of your brothers, if you have that, I mean, just close the phone in her face, cause she ain't real. She's a fake. Go ahead. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That's our problem, brothers. That's our problem. We got a problem because we come in the flesh. That's the problem. So we have to constantly. Constantly, while we're in this flesh, we constantly have to upload these commandments. You understand? We have to upload these sisters as well. For you to break these cycles, you have to constantly learn, constantly, you understand, upload these things in your mind. So when the Lord bless you with a husband, you know exactly what to act like. Because what was the job of the father back then? It's to teach the sister. The young sister, yo, listen, when your husband talk, don't talk back to him. I mean, you see how your mother uh, uh, is inside this house, how she in order inside this house. So when you do, when the Lord bless you with the Lord, make sure you follow after the pattern of your mother. You see me, how she humble? She never talked back to me. That's the spirit you're supposed to have. That's the job of the father to build their daughter. So when she married, the husband don't heard nothing from her. You understand? But these days. 
Who's your father today? He's a wicked man. What did he teach you? What did he teach you for you to take in your marriage? Nothing. He was a nigger. Nigger, 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 nigger. That's what he was. So what would he teach you? Your black man, your father, what did he teach you? Nothing. He don't teach us nothing. I mean, I, I still, I told my father, you didn't teach me nothing. I don't be no man, nothing. I just grew up. That's it. <laughs> but what is a man? I don't know nothing. I mean, I had to learn all these things from Bishop Nitan. You and the brother that was before Bishop Nitan. You understand? I have to learn how to be that man. And I'm still going through the struggle because I'm a man in the flesh. I'm supposed to be a man in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. But I'm a man in my flesh. That's what Paul trying to let you acknowledge is something in you that's going against you. It's sin. We all have it in us. It's going against what we're trying to upload. You understand? So I want, I want your guys to focus to read verse 25 again. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. I want you to focus in verse 15. Read verse 15. 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. You see, verse 15 is a nigga who don't have no control over himself. But sin take him over. You understand? But he acknowledged something. He said, what I want to do, I find myself not doing it. You understand? What I hate, that's what I do. That's a nigga. He will kill his, he will kill his own flesh. You know what I mean? When you kill your own brother, it's your own flesh. Just for what? Because you don't like the way he look? Why? Because you want to take his sneakers? Why? You want to sell drugs to him? Why? You want him to be in your gang? You will murder him. Because you don't see your image in him. He is you. But that nigga, you know what I mean? When he's evil, he don't see you as his brother. He can't even see what he's doing is evil. <laughs> you understand? Go ahead. Verse 16. Verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is that it is good. That's why that's what I say every man, every woman create with an instant of knowing good and evil. Because he's saying that I consent the law is good because I keep doing evil. Every time I catch myself, I'm doing evil, but I also consent the law is good. The law is good stuff, bro. That's what, we, that's what we have to entertain is the law. We no longer can live the evil life because that's where we came from. We know us. You know, like a lot of time when people said that I find to be interesting when people say, what can I do to better myself and the truth? What did Christ do to better himself? You have to be a photocopy of Christ. What did he do? I mean, you have to constantly read the gospel of Christ, how he moved because he is the photocopy of what we're supposed to be. You understand? Did he love his brother? Yeah. Did he love his nation? Yeah. So what you mean, what can I do? You understand? You got to read the gospel, bro. Christ is the protocol how to be. You understand how we have to guide ourselves to be the godly men, to be the godly woman. You understand? Then why we're in this flesh? We have to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We got to do things. That's why they said anything you will do that will hurt your neighbor, that will hurt you. So why would you want to live like that? That will hurt you. So in this flesh, you got to learn how to love your brother as you love yourself. Because he is from you. He is you. You understand? You got to love your wife, you know what I mean, as you love yourself. Because she's a part of you. You understand? That's what God trying to teach us. We coming from each other. So if we treat each other evil, that means we don't love ourselves. We don't love nothing about us. All right? So notice that verse 15 is a nigga who cannot control himself. Sin. And he knows something in him, but he could not operate within this something that is in him. Right? I'm going to jump to verse 20. Why quick? Verse 20. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Because you've been, you been let sin led you all this time. All this time, what was led to you, what was lead you was sin. You understand? Now you acknowledge, damn, I was what I was in the words because sin was ruling over me. 
Sin was my God. I have served sin. Sin was your God, brother. The old man sin is his God. All right, you have to see this thing. 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. See that? Then the law you find that when you would do good, evil is present with you. Now you, now you know who you are. You know you are the sons of God. So now you're facing good and evil. Which one you going to let wood over you? The good or the evil? You say you are the sons of God, right? So which, which element you gonna take, you gonna let rule over you? The element of good or element of evil? Cause you know the element of evil already, already rule over you. You understand? Now you wanna learn the element that is good. You know what I mean? That's what's gonna keep you alive. The laws of God gonna keep you alive. But when you was in the mix of sin, Ephesians 2 and 1. That's what happened to you. When sin will over you, this is the stage of my UN. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespass and sin. You see that, brother? In the world, you, tr you was dead in your sin because you, tres you trespass against God's laws. You were dead. Your mother is dead. Your father is dead. You might see them breathing. That don't mean that they're alive. They are dead spirit. You understand? Because at one time we used to be that dead spirit. Where we used to do anything we want to hell do. But not in Christ. In Christ now there is no personal. You know I mean, you, you heard in Christian church that we got personal relationship with the Lord. No, no, there's no such a thing. <laughs> you understand? The personal relationship is when you keep the commandments. <laughs> That's what the personal relationship is all about. You apply the commandments. That's the personal relationship. You understand? If you're not keeping the commandment, you don't have no personal relationship with the Lord. You have personal relationship with the devil. Satan. Go ahead. We're in. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world. You see that? In time past, we walk in according to, according to this world. What was in that world, brother, we walk into? Satan. <laughs> we do everything the devil tells us to do. Hit your brother, kill him in every street. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, enter to gain. You know what I mean? Your gain is better than his gain. Just murder him. Those are evil. <laughs> because you was controlling by Satan. Go ahead. According to the prince of the power of the air. You see that? Spirit of Satan. <laughs> Go ahead. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. You see that? The spirit of Satan that work in all of us. When we disobey God's laws, we receive the spirit of Satan. I'm going to show you that, the spirit of Satan. Let's read Zechariah uh, uh, 3 and 1. I'm going to show you. When you disobey God's laws, you're dealing with Satan. That's why you cannot stop lying. You will find your way to lie, to steal, to rob. That's the spirit of Satan. Go ahead. The book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. You see that? I show, read it again. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. To resist him. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Because Joshua is one of the elect. So the Lord intervened. When Satan stand to his right hand, he used to control Joshua. The Lord intervened. The Lord said, hey, hey, listen, this is one of mine, Satan. You understand? I'm going to clean this one up. All of you can relate it to this. Mm. You understand? The Lord intervened and said, yo, listen, this is one of mine. You understand? What was the fire? The world. I'm going to take this one out of the fire. I'm going to build this one up. You understand? We all can relate it to this. God have to intervene in my life because I know I was a wicked nigga. You know what I mean? I don't know if you're, if you're confessed, just like uh, uh, Paul confessed. I mean, we all used to be evil Negroes. <laughs> you understand? Evil Negro woman. That's what we used to be. But now the Lord is intervening in your life and say, no, no more, no more that boyfriend, that girlfriend stuff says, brother, don't, don't do that no more. That's against my law. You understand? Build yourself up to be men because you've been living in a character of a boy. You understand? The Lord is bringing back the spirit of a man. 
that you start to raise you up. But I want you to focus what he said. The angel standing in the angel standing in the presence of Joshua is also Satan stand to resist what the angel is there to tell Joshua. <laughs> Go ahead. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Because that's what the Lord said. This, this one is plucked out of the fire. Go ahead. Now he say uh, Joshua is with what? Was clothed with filthy garments. With a filthy garment. He's in his sin. Go ahead. And stood before the angel. He stand before the angel while he's in his sin. Go ahead. And he, and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. Teach him. Prophesy to him. Prophesy to him. Repent. Repent. Repent, Joshua. Repent. That's what the angel is telling Joshua. Repent. That's the only way you're going to take the filthy garment. Repent. That's why we tell our sisters. Repent. Change the mindset. The angel is, is prophesied to him. Repent. Go ahead. And unto him, he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. You see that? He told Joshua that because you repent, if you repent, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove all your sin from you. Go ahead. And I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. You see, I'm going to clothe you with righteousness. Go ahead. And I said, Let them set a fair metri upon his head. So they set a fair metri upon his head. And clothed them with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This is what God wants you to become, Joshua. Go ahead. If thou wilt walk in my ways. If you're going to keep my commandments. If you're going to keep Joshua. Go ahead. And if thou wilt keep my charge. If you're going to keep my charge. Keep the works, the Sabbath, the feast day. Those are the charge. Go ahead. Then thou shalt also judge my house. You see that? It said, then I'm going to give you the power to judge my house. If you repent, change your life, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you power to judge my house. Go ahead. And shall also keep my courts. You see that? The court is Israel. Go ahead. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Who, who are these that, that stand by? The angels that prophesy. That's us in the street. We prophesy. We are the angels. Prophesy to Joshua. We prophesy to David. We prophesy to Abraham. We prophesy. Change. Repent. This is your time now. Repent. We prophesy. We are the angels that prophesy. It's time for you to repent. Become the man of God. God will give you the power to judge his house. You understand? Go ahead. And now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou... And thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men where wondered wonder that. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. You see that? He said he will bring forth his servant the branch. Who are the branch? Christ. We must repent. Let's go back. Let's go back. That's all I want. I want y'all to see that thing. Go ahead. Yeah, Romans 7. We're gonna jump, but we're gonna read verse 21. Romans chapter 7, verse 21. I find then a law. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. We have to acknowledge that, brother. You understand? When we would do good, evil is present as well. That's why we cannot sleep upon ourselves. Yeah, and that's why you have to, that's why Paul say, constantly check yourself. Because evil is in no present. Evil is there. You understand? Good and evil work together. Evil and good work together. That's what we have to acknowledge. We have to constantly check ourselves. You know what I mean? We have to constantly check ourselves if we in that faith. That's why Paul's saying that. If we walk in that faith, we have to constantly check ourselves. How we are, brother keeper, we have to constantly check ourselves. Are we walking according to what God has given us? We have to constantly check ourselves. Because there is a good in us, there is an evil in us. They both come from the same machine. Let's get that in uh, Mark 7, 21. This is the machine you have inside. They call that mind, the fleshly mind. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. You see, you see where evil come from, brother? So, so is the good. <laughs> you understand? From the thoughts, evil and good come out of the thoughts. Every thought, like you have a thought. Like, 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 for example, you have a thought of building a house for brother. That's a thought. You want to help brothers. That, these are good thoughts. You understand? 
you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Good and evil coming from the same, the same fleshly mind. Man, but you have to control it because there's, uh, uh, you have to control it. How you control it? By upload the, the law. You're able to see the sin when he's coming in and out. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. So now we know where evil thoughts come from. It coming from within the heart of men. Right? Let's go back to Roman. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You see it now? It's in the same heart. Good and evil is filtered to the same mind. But thank God, I want you guys to see something now. It's something more powerful we got. The world does not see yet. All right? Read verse 25 again. Verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. But he said he thanked God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why he thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord? We are able to see what is good, what is evil. Through Jesus Christ, we are able to see in ourselves there's something good, there is something evil in us as well. But the power is through Christ. We are able to look within and say that, yo, there's something evil in me too. There's something good in me, there's something evil in me. Go ahead. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Why, why is very important with that mind you serve the laws of God? Let's read in uh, Woman 8. Woman 8. And let's read verse uh, MET. Let me see. Let me see what verse 18 said. Uh, verse 18. Romans 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. Now, nah, nah, let's go all the way. Uh, what I want in 18. Hold on, hold on. I get it. Oh, quick. 8, 8. I need that verse. Uh, okay, I need that verse right here. Verse, yeah, uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Because mm -hmm. the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. You see that? You see it clear? The carnal mind. We all have a carnal mind, but we got to change it. That carnal mind that allowed us to do evil, we have to change that carnal mind by feeding it with the spiritual, with the spiritual word, which is the law. You understand? The Lord created it like that to go against one another. You understand? The carnal mind. I'm going to show you the war that's going within the carnal mind. Let's go back to Romans 7. In verse, Romans 7 in verse, all right, we're going to read that verse. Romans 7, we're going to read verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, verse 23. Romans 7, verse 23. But I see another law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind. You see that? It's warring against the law in your mind. What is the law that was in your mind? God's law. God's laws. The evil is warring against God's laws. Hey, hey, brother, you can do it. No, nobody going to see you. I mean, that's at the evil mind. That's the evil thoughts. I mean, you can be deceived, brother. Nobody know you are deceived, brother. Yeah, he's all in it. Everything is inside you, brother. You have to understand that. Everything is inside you. When you know that, guess where your focus is going to be in? It's going to be within. Because you can never be a God and look things from outside. Outside is a, is a, is a vision of things you're not supposed to be. <laughs> but the inside is thing that you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a God. Then you're supposed to control good and evil within. That's what makes you a God. Let's read that in, uh, in Genesis. In Genesis 3, they become just like us. I think it's 21 or 20 around the area. Yeah. See, when you're a God, you're able to control it within. Because outside is an image what the Lord don't want us to be. Look at the new black community. The Lord don't want you to act like this. Look at the TV. The Lord doesn't want you to act like that. You understand? But how the Lord wants you to be is within. When you conquer it within. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, 
The man is become as one of us. Stop. Read that thing again. The man is become as one of us. Read it again. The man is become as one of us. To know what? To do what? To know good and evil. You see, see what we have to become, brother, to make us a God? We have to know good and evil. That's why this world was created. To become a God in this earth, you got to know good and evil. You understand? So if you don't know what's good, if you don't know what evil is, why would God give you the planet earth? They're going to come with good and evil. When you rule over the nation, they're going to do evil things. Then how the hell are you going to check them if you don't know what evil is? You understand? So to be a God over nations, you got to know good and evil. That's what's going to make you gods, king and priest. So Christ can really deliver you five city. Christ can deliver you a whole, a whole friends. Because you're going to know you are God to know good and evil. You are king and priest. You understand? A king and a priest. That means you are God upon this earth. But there is a God that's going to be good. We have to report to Christ. You understand? Christ is the head king. There's going to be many little kings underneath of Christ. But Christ is the king. All right? So we must conquer the earth. We must conquer the earth. Then we, Christ going to give it back to the Father. But we must conquer the earth. Go ahead. As children of God, as gods upon this earth. You understand? So we have to know good and evil, family. Let's go back. Men become just like us to know good and evil. Because, get, uh, let me hit you up with this one. Uh, uh, Hebrew 5, let me see verse 13. Is that 13 or 14 I want? A God, let me tell you something about a God. When you're looking at Moses' law, are we as a gods under Moses' law? We was off and on, evil good, evil good, evil good. We was never a God under Moses' law. We were just children. We act like children. But on Christ, we are gods to know good and evil. They make you a, a status of God. Go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 no. All the way, all the way down. Is that 15? Yeah, strong, yeah. To discern, yeah. Yes. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. But strong meat belonging to them that are of full age. You see that? A strong meat belong to them that are strong, uh, strong age, right? Full age. Full age. Go ahead. Even those who by reason of use. You see that? By reason of use. By reason of youth. Go ahead. Have their senses exercised. You see, your senses have to be exercised. <laughs> Go ahead. To discern both good and evil. Our senses never exercise to know what's good and evil. That's why we were just like our children. Mm. <laughs> in and out. In and out to captivity after captivity. In and out. Our senses never develop. <laughs> you understand? Now in Christ, we able to do what? Read it again. But strong meat belong to them that are of full age. Mm -hmm. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see that? We can exercise to discern. We have the spirit of discern to know what is good and evil. That's what makes you a God. Where you can discern who you are. Where you can discern what you are. Where you can discern what nation you come from. What people you are. What is your culture. You know what I mean? What nation you come from. There's a spirit of discern. You are godly people. You are the sons of the living God. And they make you a God because you come from a Godhead. You understand? So his children are gods. The children of Israel are God's chosen people. We're not regular human beings, brothers. We are gods in a flesh. The flesh is only a vehicle. You understand? All right. Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to yeah, uh, to Romans 7. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Because that, that scripture is telling you sin is a spirit of captivity. 
Sin is a spirit of captivity. When you're looking at your people today in the world, no matter how much money they have, Oprah is in captivity. <laughs> Bill Cosby is in captivity. You understand? They're not awake yet. They're still in captivity. You understand? Every brothers you know in this world, their mind is in the captivity. You understand? Sin is ruling over them. You know what I mean? Sin is their God. You understand? That's why I heard I heard uh, TV Jake said, I mean, everybody is my friends. I mean, every day, every nation is my friend. <laughs> because he confused. <laughs> he confused. He, he don't even know who his own people are. <laughs> you understand? So, brothers, we learned something today. Sin is a spirit of what? Captivity. You understand? When you see our people go and worship God on Sunday, it's because their mind is being captured on the sin. <laughs> now we can see clear now why they love their Sunday school. Because they love sin. <laughs> you understand? Now you see now they eat the pork chop, shrimp, and laughter. is because they love what? Sin. You understand? Because they're still in captivity on the sin. So that's why you, some of them, you can never do nothing for them, like Deacon Athan said. <laughs> I mean, they're going to die. <laughs> they're just going to die. I mean, I know you love your people, but they're going to die. There's none you can do. Go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see? You see that? Who's going to deliver us from this body? Christ. But we have to upload these commandment family. I mean, we have to upload it. You know what I mean? And the faith of Jesus Christ. Same way he uploaded. He let us know. As soon as he touched the earth, he let you know. He said, uh, he said, he said, I come to do your will, O oh God. A body you have given me to do your will. That's all we all supposed to think like, brother. Because Christ is the photocopy of what we want to be. So when we read Christ's gospel, that's what we want to be. We want to have, we want to acknowledge God is giving us a body to serve him, not sin, to serve him. Because when you serve sin, your mind is in captivity. And you can, you are dangerous, not only to yourself, to anyone that surrounds you. <laughs> you understand? That's why the black woman is a threat to us in the black community when she don't have her mind right. She will take $1.3 trillion out of wig and beauty supplies. She don't think she do nothing wrong. You understand? Then when you trying to tell a sis, you can do better than that. She get mad at you. Because you don't want her to look like the white people. She get mad. You don't want me to wear all my makeup. I want to look like white folks. I want to paint my face. Just like the movie Damn. You remember the sister, little sister? She paint her face. She, she, she hate black skin. <laughs> so it's your black sisters as well. They hate what God created. If, if God make me black, so I'm on here trying to change my color. <laughs> so do I love what God make me? I'm out here trying to change my color by makeup. I'm, no, no, Lord, I don't like that dark skin. <laughs> I like this one. You sick. Mentally, you sick. Mentally, you sick, <laughs> but you don't know that because society is not teaching you that. Society told you that makeup is good. Makeup is good when you use it malicely. <laughs> yeah, makeup is good, but you use it crazily. Get ready when you old with all the holes in your face. <laughs> you want to be a little tick, 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 tick. And that why, why can I cannot find a husband? I don't know, sister. You tell me. If I tell you, never believe me. Go ahead. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's, what, that's who deliver us from the body of that death. Jesus Christ deliver us from living. A, you remember we was living what? A sinful life. Jesus Christ is the one who deliver us from this flesh. We able to know what this flesh made of good and evil. Their flesh made of good and evil. Now we able to see it, but in the world we didn't see it because we know you know you're about to sleeping with a married wife, with a married uh, the sister married. 
you go do it anyway. Then later on, you say, damn, what did I do that? But you do it anyway, but you're about to do it. You say, damn, I wonder if homeboy going to come home. You do it anyway, because there was evil. He didn't know the good. Now what God, what Christ is showing you in the flesh you in, brother, there is good and evil in it. You got to be a master to control that, that good and evil. Now we don't want to give in to that thing. So now we have to be a master of it. That's what God said. Men become just like us to know good and evil. If we call ourselves a God, we got to know what's good and evil is. You understand? But you have to have your senses exercised to know that all their life we was living under Moses. We was living like a, like a little boy. You know what I mean? Like your little son, you beat down for some, he go back and do it again. You beat him down, he go back. We was a little children under Moses' law. Under Christ, no more children tossed to and fold now, brother. You a man. Wake the hell up. Act like a man. Be a man. You are a God. You're going to act like a God. You're going to walk like a God. You're going to speak as a God. Go ahead. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. You in the flesh, fam. You have to understand that where you at. But thank God to Jesus Christ. He was able to to do it, we're able to do it as well. Yeah, think about it. Think about it, brother. Yeah, you see, Peter saw Christ walk in the water, right? Then Peter started walking in the water. But if Peter never saw Christ walk in the water, how would he be able to walk in the water? So, where Peter's strength was for him, allowed him to walk in the water. Christ was his strength. <laughs> he saw Christ do it. His, his instant kick in. He just do it automatically. It's in you. <laughs> you understand? It's in you. But you need somebody to do it first. <laughs> you understand? It's in you. Like swim. First swim. Every man, every woman come in this planet know how to swim. But because we lost that, guess now we learn how to swim, then we might now you, you start catching up. You understand? But you was born with everything already. Like for example, a computer. You buy a computer, that come with everything. But some computer, you only use the basic. You understand? Then what about somebody come along and say, listen, brother, that little thing, the iPhone you got in your hand, that thing can do everything. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? He said, yeah, I use that thing for everything. Pay bill for everything. I mean, wake up in the morning, I, that thing right here can do everything. This thing is a, 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 I can program this thing to be me. Think about the power of the iPhone. You can program it to be you. Wake you up on time. You know what I mean? Remind you, praying three times a day. The phone can do that. <laughs> but your mind sometimes too busy to remember stuff like that. But you have a substance that you walk with every day. Use it for what he made for. It's a tools to help you better yourself. Use that thing. Abuse it. <laughs> you understand? To get where you want to go. But your guys don't know better. <laughs> you understand? You're thinking just an iPhone. I just, what they call me. If I just get to club out, that's good. You know, I'm all good with that. Yeah, the computer I have at home, I use it. So I don't use it. I'm good. Then you wonder why you're in the bottom feeder. You know what is the bottom feeder? The bottom feeder is a person that work from nine to five. Never can think to go above himself. <laughs> he said, no, nah, I can only work for people. You know how you program to think like that? When you was a child, your mother tell you that. Better find yourself a job, young man. Huh? Yeah, say, say, say it again. Uh, depending on week. You understand? So you learn that. Then you really condition yourself to say that I, I just have to work nine to five. No, brother, you are God. You have to start creating things for yourself. Make things work for you. You come here with wealth. Time is wealth. So how much you want them to pay you? You see the difference? There's a big difference. You come in and talk about, I want you to hire me. Then he look at you and said, he not, he, he's not going to tell you how much you're worth. <laughs> he's not going to say, yo, they go $12. Get the hell up my face. No, nah, it's how much you going to pay me. It's a big difference. I made a little sister, sister good at making paint. Then she said, I want to get paid for my paint. Then I said, sis, thinking like that alone is wrong. You want to make paint. So when people acknowledge your paint, 
that they're going to ask you how much you want for that. There's a big difference. Because if you want to get paid, you're going to make things and just sell it $15. It don't worth nothing. To you, that don't worth nothing. But to the person that buy it, it's worth something. That's how we brought up, brothers, <laughs> sisters. We always want money. But we don't know how much, we don't know what money worth. It's a big difference. If we know what money worth, brother, then we would have been rich by now. You understand? But because you don't know what money worth, it's hard for you to, you know what I'm saying, to think. You have to start searching, brother. There's money out here. You don't have to work nine to five. That's a lot of money. You understand? There's a lot of good jobs out here where you don't have to depend on the, I mean, and, and, and wait for a week for your paycheck, then the paycheck, then you're looking at it, it's $500. Then you're like, what, what the hell I'm going to do with this? <laughs> I spend the whole week for $500? <laughs> I spend the whole week for $500. Then you look at 500, what is that? Nine hours a day? What is that? Five, what is that? Some of five, that's like 40, what is that? Five by nine is what? It's 45? 45. 45 hours, you waste 45 hours for $500. <laughs> there's, there's a guy who just got paid $20,000 for three hours. You have to tell yourself how much you're worth. But since you don't know how much you're worth, so people are going to give you whatever you want. Whatever they want. It's time for you to think, man. Think. Think. You know, you know, you know how they're weak, you too? They say, you know what I mean? We got good benefits. We got good benefits. Well, but the benefit, what about if you die? <laughs> what benefit going to benefit you? <laughs> what benefit going to do for you? <laughs> You understand? You better work for yourself, get your own benefits. The hell I want with you? Don't depend on no man to give you benefit. You create your own benefits. <laughs> because you are a God. Think as a God. It's time for you to stop thinking like a bottom feeder. You understand? The bottom feeder, you know I mean, is you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I mean, you might have a little house. You might have a little home. I mean, you might live. But a bottom feeder don't go nowhere. He's in control of the master. <laughs> Without the master, he cannot pay the rent. Without the master, he cannot go vacation. Without the master, he cannot do this, cannot do that. It's time for us to think as gods and do things as God. Research these things. The money is out there, brother. Your guys, that are young. The money is out here. You understand? I, had to, I talked to a dude. They're like You see, like, in a highway, people don't pay attention to these things. You, see, you notice these trucks, those big trucks that got two wheels in the back? I meet a, a Simeon brother. He said, I, I always want to do that. I, Yo, can you give me some little info on that? He said, yeah, man, they always need people. That's what he said. He said, that's your own company. He said, all you have to do, create your own company, get the truck. Or, uh, he, he, he said, uh, you can drive with your own license. You don't need a, a special license. He said, register it, get a truck, register it, get the bottom. You see the bottom things that are connected to the truck? He said, you might find a used one for three up all the way to 10,000. He said, the good ones. He said, you have a company in your hands. He said, it's always the men in jobs. Then he said, yo, he said, last week I make $5,000, bro. But you at your job working for five a week. Wow, interesting. Yo, crazy Israel, time to wake the hell up out of the dust. Shake the dust. You are not a regular man. You are gods. So act like gods, breathe like gods, think as a god. Then you're going to be all right, brother. Because they're coming for us. <laughs> they're coming for us, brother. What you going to do then? When you only work nine to five, what you going to do? <laughs> think about it. What you going to do? Come on, man. Think. 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 Go ahead. Let's go back. Yes. Let's, let's jump. Now, uh, let's go to Romans 6. Let me see. What's time? Look for me. Romans 6. There's so much things, man. Being a truck driver, too. All you need is, uh, uh, let me see, two years with a company, you can come out and have your own truck. That's your own thing. You jump on your own thing. Make your own money. That's your own company. All you have to do is suffer for a year and a half. You're good. And they're going to pay you anything, anything they want for the year because you need the experience. Instead of, uh, think about it. You go to jail for five years. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing. You ain't winning no money home. They'll tell you that they're going to, they're going to, as a matter of fact, they're, they're going to hire you, right? 
they hire you, I think, they're, they're, for the training they pay you. Yeah, I got the brother who's going, who's down there now. Yeah, I mean, Amazai is down there now trying to get this, trying to get this thing. They pay for your hotel, pay for food, and giving you a license. All you have to suffer is a, a year. After, the, after you start driving for the year, you get the experience, you're in your own. You, you, cut, you, you, cut the, you cut the white men off. And then now you're in your own. That's your own company. Then truck drivers, 90 to 100. Some truck drivers make $190,000 a year. $150,000. There you go. You see that the job, uh, you look at your, 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 your thing yearly, you're at $36,000. You did 12 months, brother. Come on, brother. Something wrong with you. You <laughs> Come on. When you're going to think, think, think. Something wrong with you. Think, think. Damn it. Think. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we're going to use six. We're going to read verse five. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. I want you to pay attention to what the scripture is telling us, bro. Because sometimes we're looking at the gospel, we sleep upon the gospel. Listen to what he's saying. All right? Read it again. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Did not Christ look like us? Did not Christ was a man? So we was in his likeness. Am I right or wrong? So if we bear with him and his likeness was like us, go ahead. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> you just don't see it. Hmm. <laughs> you just don't see it. Did you not bear uh, first Adam? Did you not bear the thing he does? sin because we come and Adam remember what they said we all sin in Adam in Christ we all make alive we all make alive in Adam we all sin in Christ we make alive go ahead knowing this that our old man is crucified with him you have to understand that the process take place but it's hard for your eyes to see it you have to see it within who you are within that's how you're going to see the process already take place. The process already at work. Because when the first Adam sinned, he was a sinful man. The process already at hand. Where every of his children coming out of him, we have to pay the price. Right? So every one of us, think about it, what I'm about to say. Every one of them, to that see the change that we are in Christ. When Christ returns, you're going to see him just like you. 
He's going to change you to be just like him. Because the spirit, the spirit in you is him. You understand? It's the same thing. It's the same trance, brother. But you just don't see it. That don't mean it's, that, it's not there. <laughs> you understand? But there's something you're going to have to do because you're in the flesh. You have to constantly study the law. Constantly feed yourself with this thing. Go ahead. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Mm -hmm. That henceforth, we should not serve sin. You see that? From now on, we don't serve sin. You understand? Because we know what sin is. Why would we serve sin when we know what sin is? <laughs> it's to Christ we know what sin is. Because Paul just tell you that in Romans 7, 7. He said, I did not know this until, let's read it in case you forgot. 7, 7. Romans 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. You see that? I did not know sin, but by the law. But I thought Paul weighs up on the law. <laughs> he able to see what sin really is. Mm. You understand? You really see what sin is. Go ahead. Now let's go back to Christ. Go ahead. Ro Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. You see, you just don't see it. The old man is gone, brother. The old man doesn't exist, brother. You understand? That old man is crucified with Christ. That old woman is... You're not that old woman, sis. Don't worry about it if you're going to find a husband. You're not that old woman. They were searching for a husband any type of way. But you are the new woman. God promised you a husband. God better give you a husband. You understand? That's why you have to think. God, I'm ready for a husband. Because in the world, you was looking for a husband. So anything that move, you sleep with. But in Christ, you got to demand the husband. Lord, I'm ready for a husband. That's when you know who you are. That's when you know that God promised you a husband. <laughs> you have to have a husband. So what the hell are you you're, you're thinking about? You have to have a husband. Go ahead. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. Mm -hmm. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. For he that is dead is freed from sin. You see that? We no longer serve sin because we dead to sin. In Christ we dead the barrier. We bury already. Sin is done. Gone. So now we have to raise a life of living godly. We can never be deceived brother. Don't use the spirit of deceit. is sin. You understand? It's easy for the spirit to jump in any one of us. Spirit of lying is easy to jump of us. You understand me? But remember, we're supposed to know sin. You know I mean? You're supposed to know that when we're in the mix of it, we're supposed to acknowledge it and repent from it. Because it's not feeling right. Sin, when you're dealing with sin, you always worry about a phone call. When a phone call comes in. I wonder what the, damn, the brother see me on Facebook? The brother see, you always worry about the phone call. But when you're living in the spirit, you don't worry about no phone call. It's naturally. A phone call is supposed to come. <laughs> you understand? So because all these devices, you all put your hope on, sin is all in all of them. You understand? When you scoop, when you find yourself lined up going in and out on, 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 on uh, Instagram, it's sin. <laughs> it's sin. You're looking for something. You're looking for something. I want you guys to understand it. You're not doing that for no reason. You're looking for something to get yourself into. Sandy sitting right there said, I cannot wait. I know I got something for you. I mean, last time I came, I didn't get you on this one, but I got something you're going, you go, I, I know, I know your taste. I know your taste. Some of us looking for good things. Some of us looking for evil things. But if you're not spiritual, you're going to find evil thing. Go ahead. Now, if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, read that part again. Now, if we be dead in Christ, with Christ. If, let's say, if. Go ahead, read it again. Now, if we be dead with Christ. I want your guys to focus on what he said. Read it again. Now, if we be dead with Christ. What does that now stand for? If you believe you dead in Christ. If you believe you dead in Christ, go ahead. We believe that we shall also live with him. I mean, wherever Christ is, that's where we are, brothers. You understand? 
Wherever Christ is, we right there sitting with him in the right hands of God as long as we apply these commandments. Ready for God to give us the kingdom. When he give Christ the kingdom, he give us the kingdom. <laughs> you understand? Because we inherit the kingdom with Christ. So why, why you all are here playing game? Why your sisters are here playing game? What you see is not what it is, sis. This is temporary. The little flesh, the little diseases you have in the flesh, the little thing you suffer is temporary. I mean, the little thoughts pop up every now and then, the lonely thought is temporary. But you want to get that mind right. Then you're able to search out the things that you really need. When you're going to find out the search, when you search out the things you really need, you're going to find out, you're going to learn something about yourself. You're going to find out you're very covetous. The thing you're supposed to live by, you have food. You have a roof over your head, right? You, you gotta, you're in a decent health, right? So why not, why not worship the Lord and keep the commandment? But you are here searching for things that ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> you understand? You want to you wanna entertain everything. Like I was telling the sister. I mean, the sister, I mean, she entertained things that had nothing to do with her. I said, sister, why would you want to bring burden? Somebody else burden. Why would you want to waste it upon your soul, though? Oh, no, no, no. I love this. I love that. You know? I, I, I mean, I, I, and I said, sis, listen to what I'm telling you. How did you board up here, sis? Did you come here with anybody? Nah, you brought up in this earth naked with nothing. That's how you brought up here. So why would you let anything here oppress you? That's the mindset. I used to think I'm crazy. That's the mindset I roll with, man. I try not always hold that. I came here with nothing. You understand? I came, uh, I'm going to read something to you. Uh, give me that in Ezekiel 14 verse 14. In case you don't know what I'm saying. And you may be familiar with what I'm saying. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. What? It's talking about the world. The world we in today. These men was in the world. Go ahead. They should deliver, but their own souls. Say it again, brother. They should deliver, but their own souls. That, say it again. They should deliver, but their own souls. Go ahead. By their righteousness. <laughs> By what? Their righteousness. Go ahead, brother. Saith the Lord God. If I cause doing some... Yeah, yeah, read that one that, that shall not deliver children. Give, give me that one. Verse 20. Go ahead. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls. So but how do you know son and daughter? How do you know them? You made him here, right? You come here butt naked. <laughs> Son and daughter was made here. <laughs> right? So, the Lord tell me, deliver my own soul. All I can do, I can just try my best. <laughs> That's all you can do. You cannot, you cannot save these children's soul, man. You better save your own. <laughs> you are in somebody else's business talking about, I love this. I want, I, don't, I want her to give me this. I want her to give me that. You're not thinking. She's a grown up. Let her do her own thing. You got your soul to deliver out of here. You focus on somebody else's business, you're going to die in your sin. You're going to die doing wickedly. Because guess what? Whatever you, you so possess, you want to have, you're going to break God's laws for it. You're going to do all type of wicked things for it. Then you're going to die. You're going to die. They go another sister. She reached out to me, yo, D. I said, I find my son. She said, my son was, you know, what is the home where the son is unstable? They keep him there. They cannot live by themselves. Huh? Yeah, but the children's center, right? Then she said, yeah, you know, my son is... I said, I said, sis, why your son is... You know, he, he's not crazy. Uh, his pop called that for him. I said, sis, usually people is in there. Something wrong. She said, no, nah, my son, son, nothing wrong with my son. Nothing wrong with my son. My son is righteous. I'm like, are you okay, sis? Then, then I want to bring my son home, she said to me. She said, D, what's the concern you got for me? I said, you're not going to bring your son home. Because your husband said, don't bring him home. Right? I said, but if you can afford a womb for your son, you do so. She didn't listen to me. She went their son home. Now their son meet the husband in the train, start fighting. But she said, that son was righteous. Righteous. Watch. I said, sis, when you bring that son home, what about if he kill that man? Then what you gonna tell that man family? 
She's so stupid and dumb. Those are dumb sisters, man. Dumb. We taught it, sisters. Now, that's what I call you. You are we taught it. Now your marriage is done. Go worship the devil. Okay, that's what you worship, the devil. Go ahead. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. You see that? You're not going to deliver your son and your daughter. You understand? They all have to do their own work. They have to keep these commandments. <laughs> your son and your daughter, have. They, they are part of you. They are part of this world too, right? They all have to keep their commandments. That's not you can do. Listen to this. You guys don't understand. If God will kill, if God will take the spirit of a, of a baby, he will take a spirit of a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old. God will take the spirit away. Who the hell is you? Who the hell is you? They mean, are you going to mourning against a kid? God take the spirit away. <laughs> David teach you that. <laughs> Why that kid is sick? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy. But when their kid is dies, not a damn thing you gonna do. <laughs> you can fast all you want, you can pray all you want, you can jump all you want, you can clap all you want. Their kid is dead. You understand? When they go back in the world, they're dead. All you can do is pray that he, he get in these senses and we turn back because he's not fully dead. <laughs> you understand? But when he's dead, dead, the set is over. That's what he's telling you. He's telling you these great men, Daniel, Job were great men. Samuel, great men. What happened to his boys? <laughs> Eli, great men. What happened to his boy? <laughs> all you can do is your best. At the end of the day, brother, don't put all your hope upon these children. <laughs> You're going to be surprised. You're going to be surprised. Because some of their mother ain't right. <laughs> you understand? They worship Satan in a down low. And they tell you, ah, ah, I got fringes. Ah, we've been a blue. Wow. They're of the world. They belong to where? The street. <laughs> I like that thing. That little boy over there in Memphis said, he said, yo, where does his sister belong? He said, they belong to the street. <laughs> I'm with you, my man. They belong to the street. <laughs> Go ahead. Though Noah, Daniel, Job were in it, as I live it, saith the Lord God. Mm -hmm. They shall deliver neither son nor daughter. Mm -hmm. They shall deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. You see that? They're going to be delivered their own soul by their own righteousness. We have to understand. All right? So we have to understand one thing about this truth. This truth is you must deliver your soul by your own righteousness. You must deliver your soul. How are you going to deliver your soul out of this body? Is by you doing what's right in the sight of God. Every one of you have a soul. I'm hoping. Let's go back. Where you at? Where you just read that? The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. You see that? If you dead in Christ, you also live with him. Because he live. He, he, he dead in where he live. So you also live with him. Go ahead. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. You see that? He died no more. So us likewise. Sin ain't going to kill us no more. Because we're not going to let sin rule over us no more. Go ahead. Death have no more dominion over him. You see that? Death have no more dominion over him. The wage of sin is what, brothers? So if you're not doing no sin, do death have dominion over you? No, you are alive. Go ahead. For in that he died. He died unto sin once. Mm -hmm. But in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. Mm -hmm. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see that? You are alive to Christ. You are alive to Christ. You understand me? Think about it. Christ alive, where did he went? He sit into the right hand of the Father. Lord, us who stay behind, we are alive in Christ. Do, what we're going to do on this earth? The law. Christ no longer have to go through his thought no more. Thought of good. He don't have to go through that no more. 
because he's sitting in our hand. But he's strengthening us. That is because he's in each one of us. He's strengthening us to say, yo, you don't have to do that. You're in control now. I'm giving you full control over good and evil. You no longer have to let sin rule over your body anymore. You no longer have to be deceived anymore. You no longer have to be lying no more. Because I am in you for good. Go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. You see that? Sin was, was rule over our body at one time. Sin was the ruler. Sin do whatever the hell he, he want to do with our body. Just like a horse. You know, sin wired us just like a horse. But now we no longer let sin wired us no more. You understand? We're going to acknowledge it and rebuke it. Go ahead. That you should obey it in the lust thereof. You see that? We've been obeying sin. Then we live in their lust. Go ahead. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. You see that? We but, cannot no longer do that no more, brother. Go ahead. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. You see that? We are alive from the dead. We was once dead. Now we are alive. Go ahead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You see that? Now we're going to live righteous life. Because we are alive now. The law is light. We're going to live the righteous life. We no longer can go where we was dead before. In our sin we was dead. So now we are alive in Christ. We're going to press on on righteous life. What is the righteous life? What is it to live a righteous life? When you live a righteous life, brothers and sisters, let me tell you sir, about righteous life. A righteous life, God promised you death. Let's, let's read that. Deuteronomy 28. Let's read that in uh, uh, 47. I'm going to show you. When you live in a righteous life, you don't have to worry about these things anymore. Deuteronomy 28 verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Stop. Are we doing that right now in a righteous life we live in? But now we expect everything from God because we're doing what he wanted. You understand? We're doing, we're serving him. So he should be able to provide us for everything we need. Where in the Bible you see God limit himself? Christ said God is everywhere. God can do everything and anything you can imagine and beyond. So God don't have no limits. <laughs> so who the hell, why you limit yourself? How are you going to eat today? What kind of job? Why you limit yourself? When you're in God, you unlimit. There's a wisdom given to you, man. You're too comfortable in the flesh. Being a slave to the flesh. That's why you love the 9 to 5. You love the $500 a week. I mean, the two, you know what I'm saying? You work the whole 45 hours wasting for $5. For, for, for uh, uh, $500. Yeah, before taxes. You probably hit the four four ten. Um, but you feel good. I mean, you, you ain't going nowhere with that. <laughs> Telling your straight brothers, wisdom is out here, man. No, no need to be dumb, cause it's all, it, the wisdom is out here. You understand? No need to be dumb. Today, people sit at home, you get and pay a thousand dollars a week. Just sit at home doing computer work, they get that bunch of pay. I mean, I know a sister. She, she, had, yeah. I mean, she at home working. I think she like seventy thousand dollars a year. She at home, home working. She don't go nowhere. Come on, man. That job is out there. But you need that patient. You need that patient, though. You need that patient, but just patient. You're going to be all right. Go ahead. You want to go back to one? No, read that verse again, MCs. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. Remember, their punishment was because we didn't want to serve him, right? Now you are alive in Christ. You're serving him now. So you remember what Christ said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That was not my word. This is what Christ said with his own mouth. He said, everything else is going to be given to you. He didn't say everything else you're going to have to work for. He said, everything else is going to be given to you. You got to start claiming your stuff. <laughs> you understand? You have to start claiming this is mine. Their job is mine. I'm going to fill out for their job is mine. <laughs> You understand? I, that's the job I want. That job is mine. 
<laughs> oh, I, I wonder, uh, can you pray for me? The Lord can give me. No, no, that's not what he said. <laughs> he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else going to be added. That means the commandment come with the, with the titles already. You understand? They already come with a job. They come, keep God's commandment already come with a job. <laughs> you have to cleanse. You have to believe that the job is given to you already. Go ahead. And with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. You see that? That's not, that's not what he said. That's the same thing Christ said. It's the same thing Deuteronomy just said. Because you're comfortable. You're too comfortable with the night. You're too comfortable with that 300, 400, 500 dollars. You're too comfortable with that. It's time for your guys to change the mindset. I mean, the way you think, the way you live. You understand? You're not living right. You're living like animals. But you don't know that. You know, you know a white folks spend more than five hundred dollars to treat his dog a week. You know that? <laughs> to wash their dog, make sure their dog look clean. <laughs> you understand? The uh, white folks, his grass costs more than five hundred dollars a week to be trimmed to look nice. <laughs> but there you go, you. I mean, you don't know that who you are. They you're gonna let white folks use you like a dog. Yeah, I mean, but at least he treat his dog better than you. You understand? And, but you got to understand, no way you can have the mindset no more. It's time for you to break off the cycle of that mindset. Go ahead. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. You see that? Because you didn't want to serve God, he said, you're going to serve your enemy. That's why, like, now when you go to the white man, you ask him, can I get, you going to give me the job? You give me the job, please. <laughs> please, white man, please. White power. <laughs> See, that's why you into white power. <laughs> you understand, not knowing that. You understand, the Lord said, "Now you are alive in Christ." Let's go back there. Let's go back there. Let's go back to Romans, so you may understand what God is saying to you. As a matter of fact, let's read the one uh, if you can get it. If any one of you are remember it, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah, let's get there. So, yeah, you don't think that's my words because sometimes I have to win that confidence. I have to win that spirit in you. You got it in you. I don't know why you're afraid to bring it forward. You understand? Listen to this. I'm going to give you a slogan, right? Your, your father, your father, your earthly father, right? Your earthly father. You notice that he, he never tell you that sky is the limit. Some of us, some of our few one talk like that. But a few of our father, what they say? Get a job. <laughs> now you have to talk to your son. Listen, the sky is the limit. Then you tell them how much you want to get paid. Don't let them tell you how much you're going to get paid. You tell them how much you want to get paid. It's a different mindset. You understand? You don't tell you, I need, I need a job. No, 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 no. No. The Lord already give you a job. You have to claim the job. You understand? I don't need no damn thing. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? I'm going to hit you up with something light. Uh, read it again. <laughs> Think about what he's saying. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Okay. Where was, where was the kingdom of God established first? Yeah, yeah. The kingdom of God was Garden of Eden, right? Everything was given to Adam. Eh? That's after Adam commit that sin. They say, you're going to have to work hard, my man. You're going to have to do this for yourself, my man. Got, but the kingdom of God, you understand? Adam had everything. <laughs> Adam had serving everything. In the kingdom of God, Adam had everything. But when Adam did what he did, he became a servant. <laughs> That's what he let you know that we did again. I want trust. I want that thing to seek in in you, man. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Where is the you gonna seek first the kingdom of God? Where you had dominions. One time you had dominion over the whole planet Earth. So you're gonna seek first the kingdom of God. How you seek it first by the commandments. The kingdom of God is the earth. <laughs> the whole earth belong to the Lord. Heaven and everything else. <laughs> come on man are you not here on the earth did that not God give you command over the earth to be all uh, to be, uh, uh I guess for the earth to rule over you no 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 he say you you have dominions over the earth 
The earth you have dominion over. Guess what the earth have? The earth have gold. The earth have diamond. The earth have silver. Am I right or wrong? Am I off, brothers? Come on, man. Y'all better wake the hell up. The earth you have dominion over have all these things that the other nation live off. You better claim, you better claim your stuff. Stop playing around. Go ahead, brother. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. You see that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When Christ need money, where did he go, brother? What he was dominion over. He went in these torpedoes, go in the fish, get me the money. <laughs> you go in the fish. The fish, you're going to bam, bam, take the money, you go pay the tax. <laughs> Y'all guys don't understand what's going on. You're just coolest to the power. The power is in here. The power is here. You just have to claim your power. But if you don't know you have it, how would you, how would you use it? You understand? He was a man like us. He the man. Think about it, the power of Christ, man. He the, when they charge him for taxes, he was submitted to taxes. Am I right? Because one charged him with taxes. So Christ was under the Baruch, submitted to taxes. Did not Christ was submitted to taxes? But when they charge him with taxes, where did he go? He, he said, yo, Peter, my man, go in that fish. That belong to me. This is my wealth. Go, go in that fish mouth and get the money. Go pay the taxes. Because <laughs> Christ acknowledged something we're never going to acknowledge. Because our mind ain't right. <laughs> but listen. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. <laughs> Listen to what he used. I want you to take this my word. Quite, read that again, brother. Maybe some brothers read it with no understanding. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. It said, in your life, you're going to seek first me. God wants you to acknowledge him. That's what the I in you is, is doing. The I in you is supposed to acknowledge God in everything. That's why you cannot say, oh, i see you tomorrow. No, no, Lord's will. You always have to give God glory. You notice that every man that talk arrogantly what God do, he going to kill you. When you talk about, I am, when you go like that, God will, no, you don't need, no, you don't need to live. <laughs> because you talk arrogantly. <laughs> you understand? You don't need for living. You understand? You have to understand that you have to give God's glory every chance you got. Because he is the I that is each one of us. To look out for us. They say, son, you know you're not supposed to do that, son. You know you're not supposed to do this. The voice of God is always in us. What to do, what not to do. That's what, that's what he's so mighty as a father. You understand? He leave you with a spirit. He give you a spirit. Go ahead. And his righteousness. You see that? He said that seek ye first the kingdom of God. In his righteousness. In his righteousness. Go ahead. And all these things. All these things you hope for. Because these are the things we see in the world, right? We hope to have stuff in the world, right? So go ahead. Shall be added unto you. You see that? That come with keeping the commandments. Wealth come with keeping commandments. Let's, let's again, you might be cool. Let's again. Let's read it in Joshua 1 and 8. <laughs> Wealth come with keeping the commandment, brothers. Christ understood that. We just don't have a clue yet. <laughs> the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, mm -hmm. but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You see that? You, 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 you have to meditate on it days and night because it's wealth in it. It's good in that thing. It's life in God's laws. Go ahead. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. You see that? Go ahead. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper. It says, it says then you're going to make your way prosper. How the hell are you going to make your way prosper? By keeping the commandment. The knowledge is given to you through the commandment. Then you're going to make your way prosper. You're going to know how to move in this earth. To make your way prosper, you have to know how to move. <laughs> yeah, just sit in my, I sit at my home. I'm going to be prosper, brother. I'm going to be prosper. <laughs> It don't work like that, man. <laughs> they don't work like that. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. You see that? Then you're going to have good success. You understand? When you search out things, then you're gonna, they're going to be successful in your hands. Business is going to be successful. In your hands, everything you touch is going to be successful. Like Job was a successful man. You understand? 
Abraham was a successful man. You understand? Jacob, successful man. Because they have kept their commandment. Isaac, successful man in this earth. Our forefathers were successful men. They were not bums. <laughs> you understand? So what make you a bum? Is your mindset make you a bum. But well, you ain't no bum. From now on, shake out the bum spirit. You ain't no damn bum. You a son of God. You better act That's like. Right. Go ahead. Uh, where you at? That woman. Let's go to woman. You have to understand the power you possess, brother. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourselves unto God. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. No, I can never remember that scripture. Is that the one in, uh, is that John when you say everything, she, uh, when he you said you're going to lose this, you're going to lose that, you're going to gain this. Uh, then he said you're going to get a uh, new family. What is that? Is that Mark? Matthew 10? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see what is. I never can remember that thing. But that's one of them. There is more terror than others. Yeah, the one I want this when you said, in this world, in the world to come. Oh. That's the one I want. Is that Mark? Is it? I can never remember that. Yes. Yeah. Search it out for me. But, hmm? No, no, not Hebrew. Either he's in uh, the gospel. He's in the gospel. Either there's one in John, there's one in Luke. Yeah, let me see Matthew. Let me see the one in Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Because we have to understand what this thing is. This thing we receive right now, brother, is nothing to play with. We receive the power of God, the spirit of God. Go ahead. That's not it, right? Mm -hmm. I think they're 18 and 20. Look, 18 and 20. I think that's it. Yes, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. 30, 30, 30. I remember the 30. Yes. Yeah. yeah what, what is it? Uh, Luke. Yeah, it's 18, 29. 18. The book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 29. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or mm -hmm. parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, or the kingdom of God's sake, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time. You see that thing? I want y'all got to focus on it. Read it again. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house. Because you're going to have to left your house, brother, because your wife don't want to repent. You're going to have to say, yo, keep the house. I'll start all over again. You're going to have to do that. <laughs> they say, you're going to have to abandon your house. Go ahead. Or parents. Or parents. You're going to have to say, Ma, I love you. Dad, I love you. You understand? Unless you repent, I'm just going to keep you distance from me. Okay? Or brethren. Or brethren. Or wife. Or wife. Dad already tell you that gospel come with what? The wife going to leave you. Husband going to leave you. Go ahead. Or children. Your children going to leave you. The gospel come with the, your children going to leave you. You're going to lose your children. Go ahead. For the kingdom of God's sake. But the reason you're going to lose these things is for the kingdom's sake. Because you focus in the kingdom. You don't give a damn about this stuff. Go ahead. Who shall not receive manifold more in this present time. And in the world to come, life everlasting. Christ said you're going to receive more in this present time. In the world to come, life everlasting. You understand? In this world, you're supposed to have stuff, bro. <laughs> you're talking about, now nah, I'm going to be a bum. No, 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 no. That's not what he said. So you're supposed to have stuff, but you're going to have it with what? Prosecution. You're going to have wealth. You're going to have nice home. You're going to have stuff, but you're going to have it with prosecution. You understand? But don't sit there. You a sister. You sit there working at Walmart. Talking about this a nice job. This a good job. Packing bag. No, 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 no. I mean, let, let it, let these jobs for the sinners. I mean, you more awake now. You better find yourself a decent job. Find yourself a better place. You understand? And let these things for the bottom feeders, those are sinners. You understand? You have that now. Work out your thing. You work, work in your salvation to uplift. You understand? 
Yeah, but you see the uh, when I said, you know, you know, brother is gonna say it, I say all oh, bottom feeders are no no. What I'm saying that now you are awake now. If you are bottom feeder, start using your your intelligence, your start being wise and demand the money you respect. You know what I mean? You, you understand that's what I mean by that. Because uh, uh believe it or not, there's a slave mindset where you're comfortable in the money that they give you. You're not supposed to be comfortable. Every year is supposed to be better. You suppose because the white men make money every day. What the hell? He just pay you one money every year. Something wrong. You understand? So you have to up, you know what I mean? Upgrade yourself, in other words, brothers. If you're at the bottom feeder, upgrade yourself to get to, to get somewhere or to be somewhere. But you can never feel comfortable just staying in the bottom, just accept the men to pay you whatever the hell you want. That's what I mean by that. But their sin is not gonna know that. They're gonna feel comfortable in that. Not, uh, on, on that 500. You know what I mean? Stuff of that nature. That's what I mean by that. You got it? Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law. You see that? Sin do not have dominion over you because you're not under the law of sacrifice. Go ahead. But under grace. But you under grace. Under grace, brother, that's where the power begins. Under grace, the Lord given us full insurance. Guess what? We can build back us. The law was to, is given to you to build you. You know what I mean? Under grace, God's given you full power to build you. Build back the spiritual man you once were. But how are you going to do that? By uploading God's laws. That's the only way you can do that. That's what grace is for. Grace is a very, is a very powerful tool. That when we use it lawfully, we're going to be all right. But when you use the grace to continue worship God on Sunday church, you abuse that grace. You're going to be put to death because God did not give you Sunday to worship. He gave you Sabbath, Friday dark to Saturday dark. You understand? So we have to understand that family. Understand that. Let's grow in the spirit with that. You know, uh, go ahead. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are. You see that, brother? Whom you, uh, whoever you plan to serve, that's the servants you are. Whoever, uh, you, you, you have to ask yourself, who do you serve in? Do you serve in Christ or do you serve in sin? You understand? Which element you serving? Are you serving the good side, which is, or are you serving evil, which is sin? You have to discern that. Go ahead. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves service to obey? You see that? You can heal yourself to serve sin. You can allow yourself to serve sin. Go ahead. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. You that? That's the servants you are to whom you obey. If you obey sin, you're going to be sin servant. But if you obey Christ, you're going to do what the righteousness is. Go ahead. Whether of sin unto death. See that? If you continue serving sin, you're going to die. Go ahead. Or of obedience unto righteousness. You see that? Obedience unto righteousness. When you obey, you're going to do what's right. Go ahead. But God be thanked that ye, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart. Read it again. But God be thanked. Listen to what he said. God be what? But God be thanked. What is that? What is it? Thank? Thanked. What, what is it? T-H? T-H-A-N-K-E-D. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Read it again. But God be thanked mm -hmm. that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Where we have to obey that thing, brothers? From within. You know what I mean? We have to obey it from within. Because the war is within. The war is within, brothers. We got to obey God from within. That's, the, that's where the war begins. It's within each one of us. It's war and going in and out. It's war and going in and out. God be thanked. You understand? That's why I say thank God to Jesus Christ. Now we're able to see it now. The war is not outside. The war is inside. We have to conquer ourselves inside. 
then it's naturally going to manifest itself outside. Go ahead. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. You see that? Read that thing again. Being then made free from sin. You see, being then you made free from sin because God through Christ make you free from sin. Go ahead. You have become the servants of righteousness. You said now you are the servants of righteousness. Then God going to give you everything, brother. When you're the servant of righteousness, you're going to push righteousness because you are the servant of it. You know what I mean? That's why people don't understand. When you, you, you have to become a servant to righteousness. Think about it. A servant to righteousness. Let's look at the word servant. Give it to me for $2,000, please. The word servant. Be a servant to righteousness. When you are a servant to something, man, you pay attention. You might get fired. <laughs> you, uh, a little bit. Now you are a servant to righteousness. You no longer servants to sin. You now you are a servant to righteousness. Servant, a person who performs duties for others. A uh, uh, no, we did it again, bro. Servant, a person who performs duties for others. You see that? That's the, that's the mindset you're going to have to have. A servant that do what? Performs duties for others. So you have to perform your duty. You understand? You have to perform your duty. What is your duty? Living a life of righteousness. That's your duty in this earth. That's the same thing. This is the whole duty of man. To fear God, keep his commandments. You understand? Now, if you are serving under righteousness, you no longer let sin rule over you because you know what you servants do. I'm servants to keeping God's commitment. That's what I'm serving to. That's it. Oh, you know, at your job, you say, you know, people will come and say, why are you, you go to church every, every weekend? You say, yeah, well, what you talking about? That's my life. What you talking about? That's a part of my life. You ask me, do I do that? Even like I'm supposed to don't do it. That's my life. <laughs> you understand? But you have to see the devil where the devil can manipulate words. Say, are you like, like you doing something wrong with something? Right. Like if you ask, yeah, what did you do this weekend? Every weekend I do something, I do something new. What did you do this weekend? Oh man, you know, uh 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 yeah, I went to see a concert. Like, yeah. She said, Man, I had fun. That's sin. <laughs> That's sin. But you sitting there listening to that after a while. You thinking, no, that's not like fun. It's sin. She's telling you I love sin. That's what I do every weekend. I'm a, I enjoy sin, so I do sin every weekend. But you, you said, this is what I enjoy. I enjoy being a servant unto righteousness. So that's what I do. I do what's right. Her, she's telling you what evil she do. <laughs> you understand? That's how you have to look at these people. They're evil. You have to, wow. You know everything you just told me you doing a weekend was evil. Now what's was evil about it? But since you are here butt naked, you are here, you know what I mean? I mean, any man could have just grabbed you, whipped you in a bunch of men. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. But in her mind, she had fun. Nah, I meet me a new way, way. I thought, I thought last week you told me you meet the, no, nah, no, nah, this one, he was too much for me. I let him go. This week, that's the white one. <laughs> then wait two months later, it's going to be the white one too. <laughs> go ahead. Back to Romans. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. What verse is that? Verse 19. Hmm. What verse? It's 619? Yes, sir. Go back, go back to verse 12. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. Because we all have a mortal body. You're a body, brothers. Don't let let sin. Sin is easy to rule over that thing. We don't have the immortal body yet. So the body we have is constantly we're going to have to fight to overcome sin. I mean, it's a battle. You know what I mean, it's, like, it's just like you in a you 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 in a you in a battle for your life. You understand? Sin can dead dead your life. You understand? Jump to verse uh, twenty. Verse twenty. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. You see that? When you was a servant to sin, you didn't know what righteousness is. 
You understand? So we was a servant to sin in the world. We was doing sin. You know what I mean? We was a servant to it. That's why you're looking at your mother, your father. They are a servant to sin. Then you're looking at the work. Sunday worshiper, uh, 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 Islam, Buddha, Christian. They are the servant to sin. You understand? These are sin. Yeah. Ed? What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? You see that? When you was a servant to sin, what fruit? What something good you get out of it? Now you feel ashamed. Now you seeing the thing you was doing was so wicked. That now you feel ashamed behind it. You're like, damn, I should not do that. I should not. You're ashamed. What want to make you go back to it? You know what you was doing. Now you went back to the shame. Go ahead. When the end of those things is death. You see that? The end of these things, brother. Thank God, God take you out of there quick. You would have been dead. You would have been dead. Go ahead. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God. You see that? Now you make free from sin. Now you become a servant to God. We just read the word servant is to serve someone. Now we're here to serve God. We're not here to serve the white man. We're not here to serve nobody but God. God only true God. That's it. That's why the white man cannot understand why we're saying that we're here for our people. We're here for our people. We're not here for all ways of people. We're here to heal our people because they are the children of God. They are our brothers. They are uh, our mothers. So we're here to heal them, to wake them up out of darkness into light. That's our job. We never hanged nobody. We never killed nobody. How the hell are we a hit group? Anytime you stand for the welfare of your people, you understand the devil going to call you a hit group. It's the devil job. It isn't nothing but the devil job. But, I mean, when you were selling drugs to the neighborhood, though, yeah, you was not called a, 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 a hit brother. I mean, I'm saying they give you, as a matter of fact, they, pro, they provide you a nice little place. They're called jail. You sit there, meditate on for a while. <laughs> you understand? But when you're trying to change the mind of your people to stay out of jail, nah, you hit, you, 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 you hit your own people. No, 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 no. No, nah, you ain't going to skip this thing. No, 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 no. They trust me. The Lord going to turn that to a commercial for us, not against us. Because when Bala, uh, ba, uh, what's the brother name? Bala or Balaam was trying to curse us. What happened? The Lord turned the curse to a bless. So the head group, uh, you see the white men talking about we are head group. This is the commercial for Israel to turn back to us, to the true God, to turn back to his, to his God, which is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God going to turn it around. Trust me. Your people are going to say, yo, what you talking about? Let me see. They hit good. I don't see nothing to hit about that. <laughs> you understand? That's why the brothers who decide to speak evil of us. I mean, we didn't pay them. They decide to do free commercial for us. We was good. They decide to do free commercial. We're good. That's nothing wrong with that. You understand? You think when the white men go on the TV and talk about this is a hit group. I, I, da, 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 da. This is the commercial, brother. Look at it as a commercial. You didn't pay for it. Now you're in a big scream. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pebbles and gold. The hell you were about. Did you pay for it? No, you didn't pay for it. It's a commercials, man. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? You know how I know it's a commercial? What God, what Christ said? The gate of hell would not do what? Prevail against it. That's how you know everything is commercials, man. Why, why you all worry about? When our time come, our time will come. But right now, brother, enjoy the time. I mean, push the gospel to the best way you know how. To the media. Sisters, uh, cut these little videos, put them on your media. You understand? Or create, you can create, you, you know, some of y'all want to create private thing to do evil. Why don't you just create a private thing to just push the truth? <laughs> you understand? Just create a private thing, just upload video. That's all you do. You're like, this is my work. This morning I'm going to get up. I'm going to put three videos up. This is my work for the Lord. And then when people look at this, I say, who's that? Who's that sister? She always about that. Nobody knows who's who. <laughs> but you know you're doing your work. You know you're putting your bricks out here. Because sometimes, be very wise, sisters. That depends what kind of jobs you have. Don't be stupid. <laughs> you understand? And want to put your face in everything. Us, we don't give a damn. <laughs> we all put our face in everything. But you be wise. 
Be wise. Because guess what? We can take the heat. You, you cannot take too much heat. So be wise. And put your thing in everything. Then you know that you're working for the government. All they have to do, go through your thing. Look, look at it. Look at it. Don't be wise. <laughs> be wise as a serpent. That's what they mean, be wise. Go ahead. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become service to God. You see that? Now you make free from sin. Now you are the servant to God. When you are a servant to God, you got to put works in. Because God ain't leaving the heaven to come do work here. He set you up to do the work. So what the hell are you talking about? You don't have to do nothing. <laughs> so sit in your behind. <laughs> uh, yes, you are a servant to God, right? When you are a servant, like if I'm your servant, <laughs> if I'm your servant, you're going to send me to the grocery store, am I right? You're going to send me to make sure your clothes is iron. But I'm a servant to you, right? So why when we say we are a servant to God, we confuse? If you are a servant, you go out here and do the work. <laughs> and that's what a servant to do, do the work. You sit in your behind, you don't want to do nothing. All you want to do, you entertain your sin. Oh, come on, man. It's time for you to wake up out of the dust. Sin is dust. Wake out of there. Shake, the, shake, uh, uh, shake your uh, shirt. Take that thing out of there. You're going to be all right, black man. You're going to be all right. There is a God that's watch over you. I want you guys to acknowledge, uh, brother like uh, Elijah. Not uh, 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 yeah, Elijah. Yeah, you remember when he was with the servants, right? Then the servants see the armies coming to get their brother, right? Then the servant said, man, which is, was Elijah, uh, Elisha and Elijah. You understand? So he said, that's why, that's why the young man sees so much thing. I, I wonder why he asked for double. You know I mean? He said, let me get double in what you got. Because he see things that, that the prophet was doing that he said, whoa, whoa. He said, let me get double in what you got. Imagine that. Why well, you see an army coming for one man? You understand? Your little servant say, yo, my man, today we got caught. We're going to get caught today. You know I mean? He said, no, 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 don't worry about that. He said, yo, they're coming. They're in, the, they're in the bottom of the hill. They're coming. He said, don't worry about it, man. He said, what you mean, don't worry about it? There's nobody with us. It's only me and you. <laughs> it's a whole army coming in. He said, I'm telling you, don't worry about it. You know how I know for you not to worry about it? The Lord opened his eyes so he may understand. He didn't see my army. Because he have not seen my army yet. I, Elijah is, is shown that he was never alone. Christ never alone. Us likewise, brother, we never alone. We walk with our army. <laughs> I'm saying it where you can understand it. We walk with our army. <laughs> we walk with our army. Your eyes might don't see the army. We walk with armies. Armies of God is on this earth. You understand? Angels is in this earth. Why do you think when you're in the street teaching? Why do you think? Why do you think? You think you just there alone, just talk? No, no, no. You bringing out prophecy. So the angels is God, is God in that thing. Because the spirit of Christ is what? The spirit of prophecy. Anytime the voice of Christ is everywhere, and you surrounded it because it's the voice of Christ, which is their Lord, which is our Lord. <laughs> Think. You understand? Think. The army of God is in this earth. So your guys don't fear no man. Go out here, conquer the earth by bringing this gospel to every living soul of the nation of Israel. Every living soul. If they're in Africa, we're going to knock the door of Africa. If they're in China, we're going to come in China and preach the gospel. If they're in Russia, we're going to come and preach the gospel. Because we was commended. You don't understand. We was commended. We was commended to go to what the four corner of the earth to push the gospel. So which army who can stop us? No army can stop you, man. <laughs> No army on earth can stop you because you was commended by God to go teach the gospel to all the four corners of the earth. <laughs> that, that means you protected by who? By God. You know, your guys don't understand, man. Your guys don't understand. Your guys have to search out ambassador. Search out the word. See what it means. Then you're going to know how powerful you are in this earth learning this gospel. Pushing this gospel. You're not a regular person. 
You understand? No one just can come to you, kill you. Like, uh, you just decide, I'm going to kill him today. No, 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 no. It don't work out like that. You have to ask permission. <laughs> from up there, that, that's who sent me. You have to go ask permission from God. I'm about to kill one of your ambassadors. <laughs> then when you kill one of the ambassadors, what's going to happen? If you go kill an American ambassador, what's going to happen? War! <laughs> you go kill an ambassador of Russia, there's going to be war. You understand? There's going to be war. So likewise, is you likewise. We are ambassador upon this earth because Christ says so. <laughs> and we didn't come here alone, brother. We come with strength and power. Understand that and know that. All right? Let's continue. Let's jump away. Where was at? Romans 6, verse 22, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death. Which verse is that? Verse 23. Now, read verse 22 again. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God. You see that? We make free from sin. We become servants mm -hmm. to God. Brother, when you are a servant to somebody, you don't have a damn thing to say. He can send you anywhere you want. That's why I keep telling you guys, don't think. You are a servant to something. When you are a servant to sin, you are doing your own thing. Whatever you want to do, you are doing it. Now you are a servant to somebody. You don't have a damn thing to, to say. But do what the master said. That's it. No need to add up two cents, four cents, five cents. No, 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 no. You don't need all that. Just observe and do. That's it. That's why we tell you guys. You want to become a great teacher? Observe us, how we operate within the spirit, and just do the commandment. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Sisters, likewise. Look at the four mothers. You know what I mean? They had good names in Israel. That's how you know about them, because they had good names. So you want to idolize Sarah. You want to idolize Judith. You want to idolize Mary, you want to idolize your four mothers, Esther in the West. You want to idolize them. You want to become them. That's what Proverb, what is it, 20, what is it, Proverb 23? Then I got 23. Proverb, no, no, uh, Proverb 31. That's what Proverb 31 is all about. You understand? It's, that's what, that's Proverb 31 is a spirit of a woman. Is a spirit of a woman. Remember, is a woman talking to her son, is telling her son what kind of woman to look for. <laughs> you understand? He's saying that, that, that there's going to be some woman who's very good in business. There's going to be some woman who's very good at raising children. Not every woman can raise children. I, I hope you all know that. Some women can only make children. They cannot raise no children. They're not patient enough to raise no children. But she have to look within herself say, you know what? I'm not patient enough. You understand? Then she can talk to her Lord say, you know what? I know that sister there. She more patient than me. Why don't we give her kids for her to raise her kids? You know what I mean? She can teach school, education her kids. But that sister that is not right in her head, she's going to say, yes, I can teach him. Open the TV, son. You on. <laughs> She's unfit to be a mother. You understand? A woman that will put your kids in front of the TV, why you not supervise it? You unfit to be a mother. Because that's why you like this the way you are. Because your mother was doing the same thing to you. You understand? You notice you're doing the same thing. The habit's still alive. No, no. I want to be, I want to be, uh, uh, what does it, I want to be, uh, when the wife at home, what, that's a title. Stay at home. Yes, yeah, stay at home, a home, 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 home wife. Uh, yes, yeah, stay at home wife. Not a lot of women can do that. <laughs> you understand? Sometimes you need to uh, uh, take your ashy black behind the work. You understand? And help your husband. <laughs> you understand? Help <laughs> him. Sometimes uh, you have to say, sis, I love you, sis. But uh, you're not doing nothing for these kids here. Please, sis, find, find, find a job. Find something to do. This thing is not for you, sis. This one is not for you. This one is not for you. Because when something for you, you don't complain about it. <laughs> when you love doing something, do you complain about it? Then you notice that sister that always complain. <laughs> that's, not, that's not her. 
When you love, you're supposed to love teaching your kids. <laughs> Am I right, brother? You're a teacher, right? So when you do, you love teaching kids, right? <laughs> because that's a habit. You love teaching kids. So they got some sisters that don't have no compassion. They don't have passion for love teaching their kids. Bro. You understand? That's okay, sister. Just get your ashy black behind. To, you know what I mean? White power. You feel me? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Go, go, go do what you know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you may have a decent life better. You want to go to, uh, you know what I mean? A lot of these sisters, their uh, home wife, I mean, they're complaining about my husband don't take me here, my husband don't take me there. Then you, say, you look at the sister and say, sister, you have a job? She said, no. Well, my husband have a job. Then you go, brother, no, yeah, I mean, she complained about, brother said, uh, D, she know what the bank account look like. She want me to take her there and there, but the bank don't have nothing on it, D. What she want me to do? That sister right here, the ashy black sister right here, need to take her simple behind to work. You understand? Because she ain't doing nothing. She not comfort the brother. He ain't doing nothing. She oppressing the brother. She know that credit ain't right. She want to force you to buy a house. You like sis, my thing is 530. Your thing is like 430. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's nothing we can do, sis. We got to be patient with that. Let's patient right now. Let's win our little place. We're gonna be all right. You understand? We don't have to worry about counting the grass. The landlord cut the grass. Yeah, a lot of things we have to worry about. But the landlord do that. <laughs> but I said, what to put you in a bill where you know you cannot afford it, man. She said, I need me a new car, baby. you like, yeah. you like, look at my car. I need a new car. No, nah, babe, I need a new car. Babe, we cannot afford it right now. Ah, uh, because, because if that was you, you can afford it. But, but if that's me, I cannot, you cannot afford it. All these demonic spirits, sis, stop. Stop trouble your home. A lot of you trouble your home. Not realize what the hell you're doing. Be very mindful, man. Stay in the spirit. As, stay in the spirit. Then you're going to be all right. But when you trouble your house, demon is coming inside your home. You understand? That's why we must understand that being a servant of God, we have to submit ourselves to be the servant to God. We no longer can submit ourselves to be the servant to sin now. We have to, we have to humble ourselves to be the servant to God. You understand? I want to read something to you that we just read in the first thing before I close. Uh, uh, we did in uh, Romans 7 and 25. I want you to see something. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 25. I thank God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Always understand, brothers, understand what's taking place. It said, I, myself, will serve the laws of God. Your job is to force yourself to keep the commandments. You heard that? Your job constantly is to force yourself to keep their commandments. But if you don't have the strength, which is the law, you're not going to be able to do that. That's impossible to even operate on that. You understand? Your job is to constantly tell yourself, we have to keep these commandments. It's the same thing when you was in the world. You tell yourself, yo, we're about to hit this club. Yo, we're about to hit this blunt. We're about to hit this weed, whatever you used to smoke. We're about to hit this cigar. We're about to hit this cigarette. A, you got control over that thing to tell it what to, you was telling. You was telling yourself what to do, what sin to do. Now you came in this truth, you confused what to tell yourself. Now, now you have to say, self, listen, we used to do all type of wicked things together. Now we no longer going to do it no more <laughs> because now Christ giving me a license. I can control everything that go in and out. You understand? You're able to control your thoughts, brothers. You're able to control your thought. That's the most powerful man on earth. When you can control your thought, you're the most powerful man on earth. Then you got the power to Christ to do that. So let's operate within the element, brothers. Everything is already here. The kingdom is here already. You understand? Everything is here. The establishment is already here. All you have to do, play your part. 
then he's going to manifest himself. Where if we eyes, that, that, that's not what he said. If we eyes shall see the son of God, <laughs> when he arrive to take the kingdom, <laughs> you know I mean? he's not, I mean, he's going to arrive to take the kingdom. <laughs> he's taking something. <laughs> you understand? He's, he's arrived to take what's given to him. The kingdom. The planet earth is given to him. Every eye is going to see who that earthly kingdom was given to. <laughs> Christ. If we are the heir of Christ, brothers, the kingdom is here. So meditate on this. Search out daily and get yourself in the spirit of humbleness in the sight of God. With that, brothers and sisters, happy Sabbath. Stay in the spirit. Most sign Christ bless you all. Everybody got bread and wine? Good. All right. For I received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and thank thee. Amen. You see that bread right here? That's my favorite bread. It's not too complicated. Good bread. It's not too complicated. Sister, sister was in the spirit. You know what I'm saying? She was in my spirit making this nice bread. Okay. I don't want, I don't like too complicated. I would like basic. That's a good bread. Yeah, yeah, your brothers, man, stop playing with the bread. All right? Yeah, you all enjoy the bread? So clap the hand for the sister, man. She did a good thing. Oh, praise to the Mozart. Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. What color is he? Right. Who are we? Israelite. Who are we? Israelite. Who are we? Israelite. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the is what? His what? His what? His what? His what? All right. We got any uh, new members?